sometimes the best stories in golf aren't found on tour. You'll find them at the back of the range. And here's your host, Ben Adelberg. And once again, welcome to the Back of the Range. I am your host, Ben Adelberg. This is episode 174. Hope that everyone had a very Merry Christmas. Hope that you're staying happy and healthy. And like everyone else, is looking forward anxiously to 2021. I'm finally home from my travels. Since the beginning of November, I've been to Dallas twice, Kansas twice, Orlando, Miami, but I'm home. My goal is to get you two more episodes before the end of the year. This is the first. I have one more in me before 2021 begins. So we're going to get into this one quickly. But please make sure you are always following on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Every single episode is at thebackoftherange.com. There is still merch available. Face masks, trucker hats, towels, t-shirts, there's all sorts of stuff out there. So make sure you go to the website, thebackoftherange.com. And if you have some free time, pop in, leave a review in Apple Podcast. Really does mean a lot. One of the best things about having this podcast is my interaction with listeners. It never gets old. It's greatly appreciated. So please keep doing it. My guest on this episode is Julian Perico. I'm close with many of the amateurs that I've met throughout the years at tournaments and through social media. I'm really rooting for them all. I'd like them all to go out and shoot 65, make a big putt while, you know, of course, I have my camera with me. And if they're facing each other in match play, that's a tough one for me. But I hope that every match is full of birdies and goes down to the last hole. They're all my guys, so to speak. And Perico is definitely at the top of that list. And the funny thing is, is that I hear that from other players as well when Julian's name comes up. Everyone knows him from what he does on the golf course but especially off the golf course. It's a great hang when you're with Julian. Nobody is a stranger to him. They're just friends that he hasn't met yet. Julian is a member of the Arkansas Razorback men's golf team. If you want some stats, I got them. He led his team as a freshman to the SEC championship. He was the only Razorback to go 3-0 in match play, and as you can imagine, that earned him a spot on the all-SEC freshman team. He picked up his first win as a freshman at the Jerry Pate Intercollegiate, setting all sorts of school records, and shortly after this episode was recorded, Julian won again at the Vanderbilt Legends Collegiate. You're going to see a lot of him in the next few years at Arkansas and on the national amateur circuit, and I defy you to find a reason not to root for him. This was a fun conversation we hit on all topics from his favorite collegiate tournament, learning the game as a kid in Peru, and, well, um... He explained why he's having trouble picking up girls. Maybe this episode will help him out. We will have to see. But let's get to it now. Julian, finally, welcome to the back of the range. How are you? Yeah, man. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Last time we uh, spoke, we spent, uh, we, we, man, we spent about a week together at Bandon Dunes. That feels like ages ago in, uh, in the culture and climate of, of the world right now. But um, I'm glad we got to spend time there. I mean, we'll talk about your start in the game. We'll talk about Arkansas. But since that's the most recent uh, experience, I think I can remember of, of seeing you play golf. Um, how 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 can you kind of sum up your experience at the USAM? It was great. I mean, it really, like, like as far as tournament golf goes, I, I've just never experienced something like that, man. And, I mean, I've, I have never played in Lynx golf. I, I was told by some people that uh, – one of the reasons I wasn't uh, like I just didn't make the Palmer Cup team this year, which which I mean it was just devastating for me. But one of the reasons why was because I didn't have Lynx golf experience, and I went out there and I mean I played I played great the first two days, and I mean I got beat on the second round of match match play. But uh, man, it was unbelievable. Like I I just I don't know I felt so comfortable comfortable there, and like it was just such a good time. I mean. I'm actually like at my caddy's house right now. We we're having dinner, and uh, he's one of my best friends. And um, dude, it's just it was just so much fun, man. Like I like now that like since you mentioned USM, and like I just blocked my mind for a second, and I I just remember all these memories. Yeah. Like like talking about like we were talking on the putting green before the putt 
practice room. We were like, if we don't miss any four footers, we'll do great. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I <laughs> we were talking about we were talking about that with like Pearson Cootie, Trent Phillips, like all my friends were there, and I mean, it was just such a good time, man. It was really fun. Yeah, no, and and you know, it's so crazy, like obviously with with how unpredictable things are this year you know you're saying you're not making the palmer cup team and it was supposed to be in ireland at la Hinge. and now as no, it's in my hometown now, now it's in basically. Your, I, exactly like now it's in orlando at bay hill where you grew up basically and at least you know when, when you came over from peru you basically played all your preps in high school and junior golf in orlando and i'm guessing i'm guessing you've run around bay hill quite a bit in your experience I've, I've I've never played there, but I play really good in Orlando. I just there's just something about Orlando, man. That that Disney magic or something. Oh I don't God. know what it is, but dude, I love. I mean, I love. Like, I don't think people understand how much I love Orlando, Florida, man. Like, it's literally my favorite place on earth. That's incredible, like, man. Because I'm a native. Yeah, I'm, some- na- I'm a native Floridian, man. And see, when you're a native. You, when when people say Orlando, automatically it's like, yeah, that's where the, the, the tourists go and do the Disney shit. No one actually lives there. No one would actually want to go to Orlando because that's where it's just full of tourists. But uh, Dude, it's the best, man. Then, then there's, the so, best. there's so much good golf in Orlando. Dude, there's so much good everything in Orlando. <laughs> it's unbelievable. So, all right, so let me ask you this. Let's let's talk a little bit. I don't want to get too much off topic because there's so many great stories that I know you're going to share. But um, – you, you learned the game. You started playing. You're, you're, you're Peruvian. So Lima, Peru, this is kind of where you grew up. And I always yep. like starting conversations on this podcast, kind of getting some information about how someone comes to the game of golf. So um, I think, what, three golf courses in Lima, Peru? This is not like, the, this is like not the nas- yeah, this, this is not the national sport. So how nah. how do you come to golf? My dad used to take me to play every once in a while. And then I just, you know, like, I got into it, man. Like, I don't know. I don't know why. Like, <laughs> soccer is such a big thing there. And, I mean, not going to lie, I suck at soccer. Okay. And, I mean, I suck. I mean, like, I can do every sport. Like, I can do it. Right. For some reason. Like, I can do anything. But, like, I don't know, man. I picked up golf. And I remember, like, my mom would take me to the junior academy there and i made good friends and i I think that's what that's what got me into it you know uh patricio this guy called patricio he plays at jacksonville state santiago he used to play college here he's back in peru now so patricio frown santiago subiate um felipe strawback luis barco he played at purdue he's he's a pro now he's he's in the latin tour yeah um but man, like those people, like, and I mean, I'm I'm missing a bunch. And if they hear this, they're gonna be like, oh, you know, what the hell? Like, you forgot, <laughs> dude. I can't, you know, like I I have so many friends. I can't really like, I can't do it. You know, like I'll I'll say two or three, and they're like, uh, there's a bunch more. You know what I mean? You can just text me later, and I'll just list. I'll read at the beginning of the episode all of your friends, and then of course, <laughs> no, man. I mean, that episode dude. will never end. No, but I'll I'll come back to that in a bit, but uh. Yeah, man. I mean, Peru was really small, and my mom would take me to the golf lessons, and she would just sit there and watch, you know, a little kid hitting a ball. And then I grew up and got into it, and uh, I don't know, man. I, I mean, I, I sucked. Like, I was so bad at golf. Too. I was, like, 17. I was terrible. Like, I couldn't like I couldn't hit a proper golf shot. Like, I would try to draw it. I would hook it. I would try to fade it. I would draw it. Like, it was just terrible. And uh, I don't know, man. Something clicked, and I've been playing playing pretty good since. It's yeah. it's been fun for sure. Yeah, you've you've been you've been doing okay ever since. I mean, you you, you know, let's I mean, I, I wouldn't say you sucked cuz you had, you know, uh, you know, AJGA All-American and uh, Yeah, but that that was that was that was I'm telling you when I was 17 I started playing good because okay. 16 I didn't play worth a dime. I mean, I didn't I couldn't break 80. I couldn't. Like wow. I couldn't. It was terrible. I was bad, dude. Like I would say not 7 I would say 16, I started playing pretty good, but okay. like 15, 15 and behind that, man, I was terrible. Like I was so bad. And and you can't, and you're saying you can't explain it. You can't think of what maybe caused the improvement in your game. I mean, did you start working with a coach? Did, did the light go? Uh, on I went point? to, I went to Bishop's Gate Golf Academy and uh pretty funny story, right? Yeah. Um, 
I used to go like when I was 14, 15, I used to go to winter camps, but I like I kept like I, I, I kept sucking like I was bad, bad, but I loved it. Like I just loved going to Florida. I would live in Peru, homeschool. Uh, I home I started homeschool when I was 15 and I would go there like every year, like winter for winter here, which was summer for me. So I would miss golf season in Peru. But I was like, I can get better in the U.S. more than what I can get better in Peru. Sure. And uh, I started coming here every winter and working. And then uh, I went, I decided to move to Bishopsgate Golf Academy. And when I got there, this really, really awkward story. Uh, I'm like, okay, I want my coach to be Zach Parker. Uh, he's one of my best friends now. He He changed my life. And... The owner was like, well, I mean, I think I think Zach is not your guy. I think you should go with Jonathan. Jonathan Yarwood. Good coach. Yes. And and I was like, I mean, sure. Like, you're the boss here. Like, <laughs> whatever, you know, like, sure. So we go to the, to the World Am because, I mean, I was the third best player in Peru at the time. But, like, I wasn't any good, you know. Like, I was, I just happened to be the guy that got to go to the World Am in Mayakoba. And he says, oh, I, I want to go, whatever. And it was a terrible experience. So, I mean, I fired him, basically. I was like, hey, man, like, I'm sorry. I can't keep working with you. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and and I, I started working with Zach. And, man, Zach changed my life, dude. Like, he just made golf so much fun for me and just taught me well. And, I mean, he changed my life. And, uh, we're, I mean, he's just one of the best human beings you someone can ever meet man like he i give him so much credit towards my little success i've had in my life i mean I, it's not like i'm it's not like i'm great or anything i just play because i love it but um sure can, but, you, can you pinpoint now this is interesting because you know you don't hear a lot of juniors or collegiate players that are firing coaches or having the the strength and their convictions to make those decisions right off the bat and i guess you know we can get into technical aspects of your of your game or specifics to to how Zach uh, coaches but can you maybe think of one specific thing that makes it work between the two of you that you know separate like I said separate of technical uh, details but what is it about him that makes it work for you well I mean we don't work together anymore we just I mean I don't have a I mean Hernan Ray is my coach right now he, he was at the USM and he helps me he really mentors me because he has he has a couple of guys on tour and he really like gets me on the right place and like strategy and all that. Sure. Like he like, he's more like a performance, you know, like it's really good. Sure. And, uh, but man, Zach, like he just knew, like he knew me, you know, like even though I didn't know him for that long, like I would go to winter camps and he was there, but he wasn't my coach, but like he was my favorite person to hang out with. That's why I picked him. Cause like, I like to hang out with him and Got I it. honestly couldn't stand the other guy. Okay. Okay. And, and I mean, I mean, some people have seen my swing, like my, my back swings just like all over the place. And <laughs> I mean, and then I like, and then I do something in transition and I put it right on the slot and I just, I just turn as hard as I can, whatever, you know, yes, like, you just do. Go. but, uh, but he was into that, you know, like he was into shallowing the club and, uh, he really didn't care about the backswing, which of course I don't. Like I only care about the ball, the club hitting the ball. That's all I care about in the swing. That's really all that matters. Like, like if I hit it flush, swinging it left-handed, cross-handed, with my hat backwards and without a shirt, I'll play like that. Please, please keep your shirt on. I'm just saying. I mean, that'd be that'd be that'd be good. You don't want to get kicked off a golf course. But I understand what you're saying. Um, like, I mean, I'm just saying like, oh, yeah. and he understood that and he, and he appreciated that I was open about it. Cause I was like, dude, I cannot, like, I literally like cannot put the club in the position. I put it with my normal swing. If I try to swing it more like in front of my body, you know, a little more upright on the way back. And, um, and he was like, fine, like, let's just like, let's just create a short shot pattern and just dial in your numbers and dude, since then like it's that's all it's been you know i i love watching your swing because you can spot it a mile away and it just it it just shows how much faith and how much you own it because it does not look i mean i love how how the like you said how just 
you just clear the hell out of that left side. I mean, I love that. I mean, that just you, you clear so well. And like, you know, there's a lot of juniors. There's a lot of, you know, amateurs that listen to this podcast that are constantly watching YouTube clips thinking they need to fix their swing and they're looking for the ideal golf swing. And you're a guy that, I mean, hey, you know, uh, you know, all SEC first, you know, SEC first team playing in the USAM. Um, you've had great success at Arkansas and you clearly own your swing and you don't really give a shit what it looks like. Yeah, I don't. I mean, dude, here's the thing, right? Like, like, like this is what I always think. Like, do I want it to look cute and suck or do I want it to look whatever? And like potentially hope like. Hopefully in a couple of years, like make a ton of money, dude. I'll I'll take I'll take the money. I don't care what it looks like, yeah. you know. Like, I I wanna like I wanna be I wanna be really good at this. And I mean, fixing my swing, like, pods. I just can't. And I mean, it's crazy. <laughs> like, people are always working on their swing, and I'm like, dude, I like, I can't. Like, I just hit it. Like, I hit it, and I try to hit it, and. I mean, dude, some days, like, my swing feels off, and I go back to what I used to do. You know, I, I, I'll i video it, and I'm like, okay, this doesn't look what it normally looks like, and I'll, and I'll tweak it. But, like, it's not like I try to, like, change, you right. know? Right. I think the, the, there's, a big, there's a big area between change and tweak, and mine is more about tweak, not, not at all about change. Sure. No, I, I, yeah. I get it. I get it. Um, I saw... I saw you a lot on the range at Bandon. Um, I, that was kind of one of my favorite, uh, one of my favorite days. I think it was you and Segundo Oliva. Yeah, Segundo. Segundo. Yeah. And then there was uh, Ali and Mac down on the other side uh, from SMB. Oh man. And and the four of you and and what I thought was so hysterical is that Segundo is trying to like he's like getting you like off the range like dude let's let's go it's fine it's fine you're like no 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 I got to hit a couple more. And he's like, wait, he's waiting for the shuttle, and you're just like, no, nah, no, nah, come more, come more. Um, that was, I had a lot of fun that day. So, um, so let's talk a little bit about Arkansas. I know how you get to Florida. I know how you get into to Bishop's Gate Academy. But you know, when you think of college golf, you think of the the D1 programs. You know, you think of you know the Oklahomas and the Texas and schools in California where they have. You maybe think the best players of Oklahoma are going to stay in school or stay in state and. Same thing with Texas and California. How do you get to Arkansas? Man, I, I, so I was committed to South Florida before yeah. with Neiman. And, I mean, that fell into a crack. And I won Junior Worlds, and I decommitted the day I won Junior Worlds. And then five days later or something, I was in Arkansas doing my unofficial, and I committed. I mean, it was very easy for me to 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 make that change. I mean, honestly, like, I'm here because of Alvaro Ortiz and Luis Garza. They, they can, they were always like, "Hey, like you should come here, you should come here, you should come here." Like it's great, and I was like, I was like, "Dude, Arkansas!" Like <laughs> thinking like a Peruvian, you know, like there's like five, pa- there's six places in the U.S. You know, as a tourist, right? There's Miami, Orlando, New York, L.A. San Francisco and uh, I don't know, yeah. Colorado. Yeah, sure. You know, like that's, that, yeah, that's it. Like bail. That's it. Like, dude, he said Arkansas. I was like, man, you're crazy. Like, you're crazy. Like, what are you talking about? You know? And, and then I, I came here and I was like, damn, this place is pretty cool. And, uh, and I mean, Coach McMakin and Coach Lace, I mean, man, they're, they're father figures for me. Uh, they're just, they're unbelievable people. I just, I just wouldn't see myself being coached by other people. I mean, Coach McMakin walked like every fairway with me, but the tournament I won my freshman <laughs> year. Coach, Coach Lace walked with me the tournament I won because he was reading all the greens because I couldn't w- read the greens worth a damn. But uh, we just have a very strong bond, man. Uh, and I just ended up here and you'd be surprised that my favorite thing here is not the golf, you know, it's, it's the people, uh, man, I have a, a solid, like I have my teammates and they're my brothers and then I have my friends here. 
Uh, and dude, I mean, they're like, I mean, man, they make this place so much better, you know. I, I've, and, uh, uh, I, I've talked to several people, um, uh, whether it's at the USAM or just in the course of doing this podcast, and uh, I'll drop your name here and there. And every single person I talk to is like, oh, my God, love that guy. Love that kid. So so he's the best. Julian's the best. And uh, they've, uh, you don't really have many strangers in your life, it doesn't sound like. Everyone's just kind of a, a friend waiting to happen. I mean, I would have to agree there, man. Like. I'm I'm just a good guy that doesn't get doesn't try to get in anyone's way. If someone asks me for help, I'll give help. But I'm not trying, like I'm not trying to make friends. It's just oh no, oh, I don't mean just, like you're trying. It just seems like no, it that's what I'm no, yeah. that's what I mean. But like I'm just saying, like it just happens. And I mean, dude, like I, I mean, I don't know where we're what we're talking about now. But like that's what that's what, how I came to Arkansas. But like let's just say right, like when I was 15, right? I I, I used to live in Peru and yeah. I turn on the TV and there's this Cole Hammer kid playing the U.S. Open. I was like, well, goddamn, you know, like, <laughs> I was like, then this guy's a legend. Like, what? The f-? And uh, and a couple a couple days, a, well, a couple more days, a couple of years later, like, he's one of my best friends. Yeah. And I mean, he's the nicest guy in the world, man. Like, that that's the thing. Like, I just couldn't believe it. Right. Like, right. I was like, dude, this guy's like. And every time I see him, and like it cracks him up. Every time I see him, I'm like, "Oh my God, Cole Hammer, oh God. holy!" Yeah, and he, yeah, and he's like, and and I'm like, "America's child," and he's like, "Dude, stop!" And I mean, I just give him such a hard time with that, man. But like, dude, I used to look up at those guys, you know, yeah. like, and uh, man, like I just have a ton of friends, and like that's why I like Arkansas so much because of my friends, and I like college golf so much. Because we, not because of playing college golf. For me, it's the practice round. You get to the range, and all my boys are there. Yep. Right, and I say hi to everyone. I say I don't give a damn if I have to hit thirty balls before I warm up. I'm saying hi to everybody because that's it. For, like that's that's what I. That's why yeah. I play the game. Yeah. And you, you, know, and, you like, and you guys are all basically on tour together with none of the pressure of actually having to try and make money. Exactly. And I mean, I've been told a million times, like, hey, uh, you should try to be like a little more meaner on the golf course and not talk so much. And like, just don't look around that much in like the driving range and like, don't say hi. And I'm like, dude, like, like, I appreciate it, <laughs> but that's not me. I can't do that. Like, I literally cannot do that. First of all, I know way too many people. So if I say hi to three, I got to say hi to all of them. Of course, know? of course. And and then, I mean, second, like, I don't go by that, dude. Like, I don't play against anybody. I just, I just, I just go out there and play, you know, even in match play. Like, I mean, it, it doesn't matter. I just, I just try to go out there and play. And I'm just blessed to have this opportunity. I'm, I'm, I'm thankful for it every day. But yeah, I mean, I went a little off topic, but. You kind good. of linked into the friends, and I, I just rode the way. You're good. What's what's your favorite? I've asked this. I'm starting to ask this question a little bit more. What is your favorite collegiate tournament? I mean, let's let's. Take, oh come on, man! I mean, I'm come setting, on! Man. I'm, I'm setting you up here. I mean, I'm, I mean, don't don't screw this up, Julian. You, I mean, you know who's listening. You know who's listening. Don't screw this up. I mean, I mean, come on, man. That's not even a fair. That's not even a fair fight. Like that's not even a fair fight. I mean. Dude, I don't even call it Cabo. I call it the BA. Oh, it's. The I mean, B- come on. Man. <laughs> I mean, dude, there's not a better tournament in the world than Cabo, man. So, for people listening, let me just like let me let me clue in the listeners here. So, the the tournament that Julian is referring to is the Cabo Collegiate, and it's obviously in Cabo San Lucas, Mexico. It is probably the most over the top premier collegiate invitational event. And it's run by Roger and B. A. Klein. B. A. is uh, I'm assuming that's Barbara Ann, right? So yeah, it is. So, so yeah, so so they are the the, the yeah. This is just an over the top collegiate event. All the top schools are there. The 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 Texas and the Stanford and the Oklahoma State and just and it's it's. I'm guessing I haven't been there yet. I got to get down there for next year. But um, what is probably the most uh, give me a good story from that tournament that does not involve the golf course. Oh man, 
the, this was this was a no brainer. I was just I was just like remembering this year's tournament off the golf course, right? Yeah, we yeah, show up there. The, go- the golf practice, is great. Right? Yeah, the golf is great. People can see pictures yeah. of the golf course. That's fine. I mean, off the yeah, golf pra- course. Yeah, practice round. Uh, this is not on the golf course, by the way. Okay. So every year in Cabo, they have a they have a taco stand in the practice round with literally unlimited tacos. Okay. Like on, like when I'm telling you unlimited, like they're throwing them at you. Like it's the it's for me that I'm a little chubby. It's like <laughs> paradise, right? Like I don't eat the night before, just waiting for the tacos. Okay. So I pull up there with the. I mean, a whole my like. We pull up there, the team, and uh, and Florida State's there. And, I mean, Puck and I are really, like, mm-hmm. we're really close. And Puck is like, dude, I'm three deep. I'm like, don't worry, Pods. Give me three bites. I'll be right there with you. Oh, <laughs> and, dude, I'm telling you, we Puck and I ate so many tacos, we could not putt after that. <laughs> it was, dude, I, it was glorious. Like, we, like, you just, so, you, you, so, basically, like, you make a line. You grab your tacos, and here's the problem, right? Or here's here's my problem with Pac. Okay. Like, we would grab our tacos and eat them while we would circle back into the line. Oh, God. What's wrong with you guys? And we would just, like, keep going in, like, circles. Like, uh-huh. 30 minutes, probably, just, like, eating tacos. Like, tacos, quesadillas. Like, what, dude, whatever you wanted. Like, just oh, whatever. And... And Buck and I were like, oh, man, like, I mean, we were just doing circles, right? And, and Ducky was there and Coach Trey and uh, Coach McMakin. And Co- I mean, it was just, dude, it was like, that's that's my favorite Cabo story. It's It might it might not be that that entertaining for some, but, no, I mean, it's good. It's, it's good. It, it was hilarious for me because Puck and I were just, like, making circles and just eating. Can, like, can, it was just... Can you imagine? If, can you imagine if you had to play that tournament carrying your bag instead of the golf carts that you guys get? No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. <laughs> no, dude, the carts make it so much better. Yeah, because yeah. it's so relaxed and like you play every six holes or every four holes. There's like a a pamper station and you get in there and there's candy and there's there's sandwiches. I mean, dude, it's it's literally like a vacation. I right. think that's why people play so well in Cabo because. Everyone's so relaxed. Coach Malloy is wearing swim trunks and flip flops on the golf course. <laughs> I mean, it's literally unbelievable. I mean, it's just so good, man. And and BA takes good care of all of us. And I mean, she lives for that tournament. Like it's yeah. her baby, yeah. her and Roger's baby. And dude, they like they they get it out of the park every single time we go. Like every, it's it's just unbelievable, man. It's it's so good. Like it's so good. Uh, yeah. No, I I have to get down there because that's what I'm hearing, and uh, yeah, we'll have to. I have to. I'll have to get down there and see you and Pac destroy the taco line again. That uh... I can guarantee you that you won't be me eating tacos. Like I just pound those things for like <laughs> 45 minutes, and then I go hit a couple of chips, and we we're off in the golf course in the practice round. <laughs> there you go. That's all you need. Um, yeah. So let me ask you before I, before I forget, I want to ask you a little bit about um, and oh by the way, so I'm not sure if you do this, but Fayetteville has been ranked, I think, for the fifth year in a row, like the best city to live in in the Southeastern Conference. So uh, no, no, nice, no no nice, no nice pick. So what are the best spots in Fayetteville? I've never been to Fayetteville, Arkansas. Um, the, the 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 basically you are the second or like it, between you and uh, Maria Fossey and John Daly, you are the three golfers from Arkansas that I'm really familiar with. So, um, mm-hmm. tell me a little bit about Fayetteville. What is there? What are your spots uh, to visit at Fayetteville when you're not uh, on campus? The the party in Fayetteville is so underrated. Okay, like, dude, it's 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 great. Like, it's great. I mean, it's a blast. Thursday nights are incredible. Granted, right now because of COVID, we're not allowed to. And of I mean. I'm like every Thursday night. I'm like, damn, you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> like, damn, I gotta watch a movie, man, <laughs> or do some homework, right? Yeah, exactly. But, but uh, the the party's incredible, and uh, just like the, I mean, the the food is really good. Rides barbecue, those eat place. Uh, there's like 50 places. Like it's so good. Like the food <laughs> is really good, and. Um, Man, it's a cool little town. 
as I said, like, the, well, we have a lake here, like 30 minutes north of campus. And one of my best friends has a boat there. And we went there for 4th of July to his house. My best, like, my friend group, right? Uh, they're, they're all on the football team and baseball team. I'll, I'll just say the names. I have to. Okay, you know? go ahead. Uh, Bumper Pool, uh, Hayden Henry, Grant Morgan, Jack Lindsay. He's the guy that owns the house. Uh, Connor Nolan was there. Miller Plyman was there. Did you say bumper uh, pool? You said bumper pool? Yeah, bumper pool. Bumper pool. Best name in football, man. That There's a guy on the Arkansas football team named Bumper Pool. Dude, he's like leading the SEC in tackles or something. Holy he's a beast. Sh- holy shit. That's the best name I've ever heard. I gotta look he's, all, he's a great Dude, he's a great guy, man. He's a great guy. I gotta look that up. And uh I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out who else was there, but I think that's about it. That more, yeah, that's about it. And then Don Steven wasn't there, Don Steven Jones and uh Peyton Osley weren't there that weekend. But dude, we had so much fun. Like it was four days of just like good times, like just just the best, you know? Like I like you can't you just couldn't beat it. And uh man, those guys like the whatever many guys I named, like they're the reason why I enjoy college so much. Cause like, I never go home. I'm known for like never going to Peru, like once every two years for like eight days. So like, these guys are my family, yeah. you know? And, uh, and I always tell them like, dude, I appreciate y'all. Like, I appreciate them. <laughs> and, um, man, they're just such a great time. And I mean, they make Fayetteville so much fun. Right. And, they're playing great in football this year, and uh, Connor is going to be our starting pitcher on the baseball team. So we've got a pretty solid group of guys. We're all athletes. We all know what what's good and what's wrong, and we keep it always on the good side. And we we just try to have fun, man. Clean fun. Nothing wrong with that. What um, I, I can't even possibly fathom you entertaining the idea of leaving school school early to play professional golf. If I, I'm guessing you want to stay as long as possible because this is such a good fit. Um, but like you said, you know you're you're close with Joaquin Neiman. You saw what he did. He did not go to USF. He turned pro immediately, and he's had great success. I, I know it's a personal choice. He did what was right for him. It's worked. You're doing what's right for you, and it's clearly working. Um, I mean, do you ever think about, like, okay, what if I would not have had this chapter in my life? What if I would not have been at Arkansas? It just seems so foreign to me to even think about you not being a collegiate golfer. I mean, how thankful are you that you're waiting, and did you ever entertain the thought of playing professionally or i mean have you ever thought of skipping school and playing professionally now i did my freshman year after i won you know you win a tournament your freshman year and like you think you're the shit and uh yeah and like a week later i was like i'm not the shit like <laughs> come on now <laughs> like I, I was like i was like dude i, I went i won i won alabama the jerry pate like right. by four or three davis riley came in second like i was like dude like i'm ready <laughs> yeah and then like i went back and i Thursday night hit. I'm like, no, dude, I got, I got to stay here a little longer. <laughs> I mean, man, I, and I already told coach, I was like, dude, I'll stay here two and a half more years because of COVID. Like I told him I'll do my fifth year. I already told him. Right. I was like, I'm staying one more year. Like, here's the thing, man. Like college, you live college once in your life, right? Yes, sir. And I love college golf, but dude, I don't want to look back when I'm 40 and be like, I messed up. I should have like had more fun, right? I mean, you're you're speaking to a 44 year old, and uh, yeah, you're 100 percent correct. You need to squeeze every drop like, out of the college experience you can. Like, I'll grind. I'll do everything. I'll do everything right. But my personal time, I want to have the most fun I can have, so I don't regret it when I'm old. That's the only thing, like. That's the most important thing about college for me. That is the most important thing. Yeah, I get to get better one more year and travel and all this. Yeah, yeah, whatever, right? Like, no. Like, for me, like, golf goes one way and my personal life goes the other way. There's who in the golfer, there's who in the social guy. Sure. And, man, I just want to enjoy it as much as I can. And COVID is screwing me up bad. But (laughs) we'll get through this and... I mean, hopefully game days next year are going to be ridiculous. And I can't wait 
I'm turning 21 in in a month. Oh, so dear God. I mean, oh, dear like God. I, we like 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 I'm just saying like I just want to. I just want to have fun. Like, I'm not meaning like partying and stuff. No, like, I, understand. I, just, I just want, I just want to live my life at the fullest. These five years I'm here. And yeah. I mean, so far I damn sure are like, Oh yeah. I'm, I'm having a good time. And, uh, coach gives me some coach and my team give, give me a lot of shade. Cause I don't pull any girls for some reason. <laughs> like I can't. And, uh, they like, they, 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 like, they're just like, <laughs> I mean, they make so much fun of me about that, and, right? And, like, and, and, and why, and why do you think that is, Julian? Let's, let's make, let's dig deeper into this. Why can't you pull girls? Is it, is it because, you know, maybe I, I'm too nice. I'm too nice. See, I was going nice to say, I was going to, I was going to say that. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm little, way too nice. I'm a little older. I have a little more experience. I mean, uh, I, I'm, what I'm hearing is you're get. are you getting friend zoned quite often? Dude, I don't, I don't think that exists. I just, I just have too many friends, but, uh, there you go. Yeah. but, uh, man, like, dude, like every time I show up to the golf course, they make fun of it like every single day. And I'm like, dude, like, I'm like, dude, like, it's fine. Like, what can I do, man? Like, I cannot like do anything about it. Like it just, it's just, I'm going through a little rough patch All right, the last man. three years. It's okay. All right. I mean, yeah. we're, we're, we'll, we'll get, you'll get, you know what? Maybe the door. Once you turn twenty-one, maybe the doors will open up a little. I bit. think. I think so, but because uh, when you turn but, twenty-one, uh, you could then finally have your first beer and experience that yeah, for the first exactly. time. See, like I just, I just haven't like, you know, like I just, maybe I just you're never sure, experienced you're, you're, the, the beer situation. Yeah. You know, like I've never, you know, like so. So I'm just waiting for that to happen. That way, I can. You know, explore a little bit. Right, right. Because, you know, what I'm hearing is that you're just kind of a little timid, a little shy. And you just, yeah, need, right, you right. Just need to come um, out of, you need to come out of your shell. And, you know, maybe, right, I mean, right. I mean, you know, have you ever just, have you ever thought of just like starting a conversation with a woman? I mean, maybe you should do but that. I've been, listen, man, I've been out of my shell since I was born. <laughs> there's nothing, there's nothing about a shell, dude. I, I know way too many people. I know. Just, I don't, I don't pull any girls, you know, and that's, I mean, dude, that's fine. Like, I don't care. I have, I have good friends. I have, I have really good girlfriends. I just, man, like I just value friendship. And then when I like a girl, I, I just, as Bull would say, I I tend to mess it up every (laughs) single time. And, uh, and I mean, it's all right, dude. Like I, I just, I just want to be a good guy. Like I, that, that the girl pulling and everything like that doesn't just that, doesn't that, chip away that, my confidence that, at all. It's that'll just come. a part of life. That'll, that'll come. And, and, and yeah, I am not, I'm not worried about it, but they always give me shape. Coach always dude. He like, today, like today he goes, uh, dude, you look a little thinner. Cause like, I've been like, I've been like losing some weight and, um, Segundo goes, yeah, he's on the no girl diet. I'm like, damn, oh dude. My God. Like, really? really? I'm like, really? Like, come on, man. Like, give me a break. Like, I can't catch a break, though. I mean, it's an easy target, but hey, I'm a good guy and I have fun here, man. Like, I, I just, I don't know. Well, Segundo probably picks up a lot of girls because he spends a lot of time on the beach touching the sand. Hey, whoa, hell no. Whoa, whoa. Hell no. Hell no, we're both we're both zero zero, man. We're we're both zero and fifty this year. Really, that's terrible. How'd that happen? Hey, dude, we ha- well, we can't go out, pots. Like we can't. It's like it's a team rule until the season's over. So like, like we can't. Like how am I? Like you know, like how are you gonna pick up a girl if you can't go out or like do anything? Well, like we literally like go to go to go to practice, go to go to the apartment, go to practice, go to the apartment. Um. Give me a um, give me a good John Daly story. I know you've played golf with him. Well, let's just say I spent his fiftieth birthday with him. Holy shit! I think it. I think it was fifty. I think it was fifty. I'm pretty sure it was his fiftieth. Dude, it was big time. Oh Let me my see. God. Oh no, I spent his fifty fourth birthday with him. Okay. And uh, oh man, did we have a time? I mean, the big John, like, like some people, like, dude, let's just like he's the nice, like he's the best, like that guy is a legend. He, 
he's so cool. He's just so laid back. He doesn't care about anything. Just like I just went there and we had a great time. And I mean, he he honestly, we played golf together on his birthday. He shows up in sandals, a, a razorback short, razorback shirt, and he kicked my ass. <laughs> I think he shot like 63. Unreal. Like it was just. Like it was nothing. It was just, I mean, man, dude, he's so good at golf. Like people like, dude, he's so good at golf. Like it's insane. And we had a great time. I spent, I was, I was there for three days. He like, we would, um, we, at night, like he would, like we would be having a chat and he would grab his guitar and start like making up songs and singing and, we would see. I mean, it was man, it was great. And Little John was there too. New Razorback, by the way. He committed yesterday. No shit, really. Yeah. So uh, my little brother's coming to town. No way. So That's great. great, man. And we're gonna be really good, I think. But that, um, that kid moves it. That kid hits it far. Yeah, but yeah, Big John, man. I mean, he's. I texted him today. He's at the. He's at the debate right now. He's like. He's at the debate. Something about John like, Daly at a president, and it, listen, I, I don't get into politics on this podcast, but something about John Daly at a presidential debate just seems to make he's, sense. He's there, the, it makes sense this he, year. He's there. He's there with uh, Kid Rock. Oh well, there you go. Yeah, yeah. He, I texted him today because we're going to Nashville tomorrow, and I was like, "Hey, pops," I call him pops. Uh-huh. <laughs> I was like, "Hey, pops, uh, we're going up to Nashville tomorrow. Are you gonna be there?" He was like. Oh, I call him and he hangs up. He says, "Sorry, I'm in the." I'll tell you right now what he said. I don't, I don't know how to say it, but uh, he said, "I'm at the Trump. I'm at the Trump round table at the moment. Sorry, I can't pick up." So, like, I guess he was with Trump. I mean, sure. Yeah, yeah. but I mean, so I, I won't be able to see him because he lives on Sunday. But uh, dude, just that guy's just. For me to like play golf with John Daly on his birthday, like, come on, man! Yeah. Like, I I didn't care what I shot. I was like, dude, I'm playing with a like, l- like a, a legend. legend. He's a legend. Probably and, one of the most talented. You know, forget about looking at records and what he's won and what he hasn't won, but as far as natural talent, probably one of the most naturally talented golfers of all time. He's so caring. He always texts me. He's like, how you, I mean, he's just great, man. Like, great. I mean, that's, that's, that's it for daily for me. Like the guitar, the guitar singing and the, the tour around his house. And then um, just playing golf with him, man. It's just, it was great. Tell me about the blessings. We haven't, yeah, we haven't talked about the blessings. So you, you, do you still own the, uh, you still own the course record at the blessings? Yeah, I do. I do. <laughs> Six, 64 from the tips? Yes, sir. So tell me about the Blessings Collegiate, where basically the entire Arkansas golf uh, program just kicked the crap out of everyone else. The, the girls team, the ladies team won, and, and you partnered up and, and won, the, um, won kind of the, the mixed title. So tell me a little bit about the Blessings. Bro, it's it's great, man. I mean, it's a good spot. Um, it it was it was in really good shape for the tournament, and uh, Mr. Tyson just does a great job, just like keeping the course to get, like, just like not like I don't know, like he just like he cares, you know. And I mean, sure. everything's everything's like always good, and it's just I don't know, it's just a good place to practice. There's no there's not too many people. Now, the best thing about the blessings um, are the members of the blessings. How so? Like they're they're friends. Like, like, like I'll play golf with them every once in a while, you know, and like uh, I'll go to dinner with them, and of course, like I have to pay my part, and because of the NCAA and whatever, and sure. I don't mind doing that, but like they're like. Like they're people that are successful in business, you know, and, and, and like they like and like I talk business about them, even though I'm not a business major. Like I felt that I've learned a lot through them. And I mean, man, Matt Nelson, uh, he was the first one I met. We call him Nelly. He's great. Michael Cheney, also a great one. Uh, Josh McNeil, he's he was my caddy at the USM. Um, and dude, so many more people like. 
that just we uh, we see them every day. Derek Smith, Creighton Parker, Hachi. I mean, Doctor Hinton. They're just like fifteen members that like like they're tight with us. Like they'll like we'll we'll be playing qualifying and like they'll come out and watch and like clap and like it's just like they're they're part of the team, man. Sure. And like they're. I think they're the best thing about the blessings. Like they're just, they're great. And, uh, whoever, whoever doesn't appreciate them on the team is just out of their mind. Like I, like they cannot care more more about us. They cannot be nicer to us. Like they're always asking like, how are you? How's your family? How's this? How's that? Like, uh, whatever. Like, let's go play nine holes. Or like sometimes like, Hey, they'll, they'll come up. They'll be like, Hey, my golf, my golf game shit right now. Like, what, what can I do? <laughs> and, uh, and man, like we, we talk golf, we talk fitness, we talk business. We like, it's just so cool, man. Like it's, it's great. Like we'll watch the football games. Uh, we've watched one football game with them one time. And I mean, it's just, we just have a really good time with them, man. Like they're, they're great people. Uh, I just think that's the best part about it. Like they look up to us for, for our golf game and I look up to them on how they they raise their families they they are great people they are uh they're just complete human beings you know and they like they don't mind hanging out with a 20 year old and although like I'm I'm not as smart or as intelligent or like as mature as them like we have good conversation and they're just great people man and I hope they listen to this because like I I sometimes I don't think they understand how much I appreciate them, but like, I really do. Like they're, they're great, man. That's awesome. No, that that's, I think that's a great, uh, it sounds like a really great environment there at the blessings where, like I said, you know, like it's great to have people supporting the program, but also, you know, there, uh, you can always write a check, but to be there with the team and with the student athletes, I think that's fantastic. So that's yeah, that's man, great. I'm good. glad I'm glad you have that environment. Um, and then uh, I was gonna I was gonna tell the the friend thing. Sure. <laughs> so uh, so the other day, like we were talking about, like dude, like people are getting married too young, whatever. I was like, dude, when I get married, I'm gonna have like 80 first men in like right next to me. Oh my god, <laughs> dude! I'm telling you, like out of the top of my mind, I could give you 20 names like in a heartbeat. Like golfers too, like not even like exclude the nine guys, my nine guys on, on in Arkansas, like my friends, and then like my teammates. Okay, I'll give you twenty got twenty college golfers right now that will be right next to me when I get married because they one they know me too well and they don't want to let me go, oh. <laughs> and two they're my brothers, man. It's 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 too it's too good. Like they're my brothers. They're. They're great. Well, so, I've, here, I've, here I've, we I've talked to a lot. I have, I have a feeling I've spoken to a lot of these guys out uh, throughout the last couple of years. Of, of I mean, you mentioned Pac, and you mentioned Trent Phillips. And yeah, so you, you that's two. Then, then Hammer, the Hammer. Tooties. That's like five. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Then Scott Roden, that's six. Quaid Cummins, that's probably seven. We're not too close, but like he, like I love Quaid, yes. right? Um, then Carl Phillips, Phillips, um, yep. yep. Carlos Bustos plays in Florida. Yep. Played, um, played at Lynn university. Yep. Sam Bennett, Texas A&M. Walker Lee. Yeah. Walker Lee, Texas A&M as well. Yep. Uh, here I go. Here's where I need to like name more. Like I, I have too many on my mind. I'm struggling. You know, right? you should start a college golf podcast or something. I mean, you got all the, you got all Direct the hook. Oh damn! I forgot my boys: Ben Wong, Prescott Butler, Cannon Claycom. Yep. Um, Noah Goodwin, dude. This is damn, great. You're just giving me a list of guys yeah. I need to get on the podcast. This Ga- is great. Ga- Garrett Barber. Yep. Brandon. Oh, Brandon Manteno. Oh my god. All right, give me Alex. G- g- give me Manche- Alex Vogel song. Yeah, give me a Manchester. No, I story. mean, what, what, dude? What conference do you want, dude? What I know. Con- I, tell me a conference. I, I mean, tell me a conference. I'll give it to you. Oh, okay. Uh, let's let's give you a West Coast conference. So, like the Pac-12. No, I'm talking about Pepperdine. Oh, okay, Pepperdine. I mean, uh, William Al and I go 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 way back. Like 
go way back, like way back. Like he he's he's really good. Like he's a really great guy. And who, who um, do you, okay, so let's let's talk a little bit about the spring and and assuming that COVID does not cause any issues with with the national championship. Um, uh-huh. Who 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 do we need to keep an eye on as far as who is really kind of trending is going to be looking good, other than Arkansas for for a national championship next year? Uh, I mean Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, uh, Florida, yep, uh, Georgia, of course. Dude, I mean so many teams. There's Vanderbilt, um, Auburn. I mean. The whole SEC, yep, pretty much, right? Tennessee, Tennessee, sneaky, really good. Yes, they are. I mean, well, dude, I forgot about Hunter Wolcott. I forgot. Wait, I forgot about Hunter Wolcott, Braden Garrison, Jay Kaplan. Ah, Wolcott, man. Wolcott has the best, the best, the best. Uh, oh yeah, mustache Stash. at the US Amber. That was that thing was Stash. insane. Dude, he's my guy, bro. We we so we played Sunny Hannah together. Then after Sunny Hannah, we drove to the Western Am, right? That's Pennsylvania to from, Indiana. Good God. Yeah, Pennsylvania to Indiana. Him and I in a car just talking a lot of smack about whatever we like. We were just talking a bunch of like it got to the point where we couldn't talk anymore. Because like like we we didn't know what, what else to talk about, dude. We talked about from politics to what what color the rainbow has like it was just unreal man what a road trip because we went from sunny hannah which finished too early that year right. well this year we went down to bowling green to play with canon claycomb right. we spent there one night let's just say let's just say we had a good time that night okay and uh then we drove up that morning to indianapolis and we stayed Together, we rented a house. It was Marcus Bird, Hunter Wolcott, Cannon Clayton, Segundo, Austin Schneller. That was Cannon's caddy and me. And man, we all missed the cut. <laughs> <laughs> no shit. <laughs> no, but no, no, we took it seriously. Like we were right. going to bed at like nine. Like we were holding each other accountable. But dude, we put it so shit that we oh, <laughs> there was nothing there was nothing that could save us. All of us just played terribly. What uh, what is maybe the next tournament that I mean we talked about Cabo. You had a USAM experience. Um, are there any amateur tournaments that that you are that are on your list that you still need to kind of check off to experience? The Palmer Cup. Oh, I didn't mean to bring that up. Yeah, that's uh, dude. I, I'm I'm heartbroken. I'm second year in a row i thought i've made it and I, i'm just like it like this year i cried this year i cried Damn. i cried i was like i was like dude i finished second at pebble i finished fourth in cabo i finished like 10th in minnesota like i'm like dude like i'm get like i'm gonna get in next thing you know i don't i'm like damn like it, it was just like you know like some guys are like oh i'm approving like uh, i can do it i'm like i'm like dude like it just wasn't meant to be, you know, like, yeah. And I was like, I was sad, you know, like it, cause it's like, like I want to play that tournament so bad and I've just been so close, but Hey, I mean, I don't know who's on the team, honestly, but, uh, I just wish him the West, the best of luck. I mean, I'll be rooting for them. I'm, I'm an international, but, um, yeah, that's the one tournament that I'm like, I just can't believe I haven't played it, man. I, I, Plus, like, I, I, I hate being, like, confident around people, like, arrogant, like, saying, like, oh, like, you know, like, I'm good or whatever. Like, no, like, that's not me. But I just think I'm good enough to play a tournament both years. And I just haven't, I just haven't had the chance, but it's all right. I mean, it's just, it's just, God, God has a better plan for me and I'm, and I'm totally fine with it, man. Like, there's nothing, I mean, it's fine. Yeah. And apart from that, yeah. um, Dude, I mean, a lot of people don't know, but, like, I play a lot of golf, dude. Like, I play a lot of golf. Like, I play a lot of tournaments, I mean. Sure. Like, almost too many. Like, I think 2019, I played 24 events, 25. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, I've played everywhere, man. I've played the Sahali. I've played, okay, my 
my favorite summer golf tournament is the Northeast Amateur. Uh huh. Wow. I'll give you that. Juan Amoyser. Okay. You that. Okay. Yeah. My my host there, Joe Dalton. He's the best. His family, his wife. I mean, they're just all great. They have two little kids. I mean, the place is pure. I also played with Deco Hammer there, which was, you know, like, I was like, can you just sign my forehead on the first tee? <laughs> but, uh, dude, yeah, we, I mean, that tournament's so good. Like, it's so good. And just like everyone, like everyone in that tournament wants you to be there. Right. And I, I just love that golf course. And I mean, the best players in the world go and it's a good test. Yeah. Like, but then I can't, I don't know a tournament an amateur tournament maybe you know like i would love to play the australian masters of the amateur <laughs> for some reason just to go to australia watch some kangaroos some koalas i would appreciate it but apart from that <laughs> i mean i've played everything man uh, but the palmer cup and i mean that one but yeah i mean you'll, you'll, i think you'll get, be you'll get you'll get it at some point oh dude i don't i mean man i don't mind if i don't get it dude i've I have I've had such an experience that like I just <laughs> like if I don't get picked and if I don't make it like dude it's fine like dude life goes on man it's 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 all good like it's all good that's awesome um, well Julian this I I knew this would be a fun one and you did not disappoint I hope we can do it at at a future date I hope to see you down the road at some of these tournaments I know you're going to be playing a lot in the fall and a lot in the spring. So I hope to see you at some of these, and uh, long overdue. I'm glad you stopped by the back of the range. Oh, thanks, man. I appreciate you. I had a good time. And there you have it. Special thanks to Julian Perico for joining me on this episode of the Back of the Range. Don't forget, follow along on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Every single episode is available at thebackoftherange.com. That's where you can find merch. That's where you can leave a review and also check out the photo gallery. So we'll see you again next time. We got one more episode of the year. We'll see you next time here at the back of the range.